we are we are good to go so i would love to hear where you are watching from so i can i'm just going to keep an eye on the, the comments so you can you can ask questions and stuff so uh, just uh, type in where you're watching from and maybe also what time it is because it's always a little bit exciting to see if you guys are staying up very late at night or if you are watching during dinner or whatever so i'd love to see um your comments and i'm just going to keep an eye on that and also let me know if if the light and the video is uh, off then uh, i will try to fix it like before when i was upside down which was a little bit weird um <laughs> but nevertheless i am uh, super excited to be here and I do apologize if I look a little bit tired. That's just because I kind of fell asleep when tucking in the kids. So um, I can see someone is trying to, I can't answer messages right now. She'll catch the replay, I'm sure. Um, I just fell asleep while tucking in the kids, but I am here and I am super excited to uh, sketch with you guys because I haven't been doing this in ages where it's just, here in the evening it's really just really nice and I'd love to hear if you brought your supplies I kind of hope you will sketch along with me which would be really really fun because it's always so fun afterwards uh, to see go in and see all the the sketches that are uploaded afterwards so let me know if you are sketching along just going to refresh that so I can see, okay, apparently I haven't been able to see the comments here, but I can see them now. Oh, you are watching from Sask Saskatchewan. Really cool. In UK and Texas, British Columbia, Canada. Sneaking away from your job to join in New York. I love that, Angela. Uh, and Melanie, oh my goodness. I'm so glad you're here. And... Uh, Yvonne, welcome as well. So amazing to see you guys. I thought I'd just start out by sharing what I brought today of uh, supplies and then we can just get started. And of course I'm going to uh, sketch with you and I'm also going to uh, talk a little bit about sketching in a less is more fashion because it is um, so, um, so important in this uh, line and wash style that I really enjoy at the moment and uh, I'm pretty sure we are in here so you already know I have a book uh, that came out in December all about line and wash florals so this is also going to be about that because I am kind of addicted <clears throat> and that's what happens when you start doing it so uh, be warned so we're going to do a sketch and I'm going to talk a little bit about how to do it less and less is more style and I'm also going to share with you a, a little bit about my course. Um, I have a new line and wash beginner course that explains all the techniques and uh, everything from the beginning. Also about reading, um, reading uh, references and what colors to include, stuff like that. I'm going to talk more about that a little bit later. And I also have a bonus for you, but uh, I'll talk more about that after we, we've been sketching. So uh, if you're just here for the sketch, then don't worry, I, uh, I'm going to stick to that. So I'm not going to uh, talk more. I think I'm just going to switch the camera so you can, uh, can see the paper. And uh, let's hope it works and it's not upside down. So I'm just, I have this fancy new camera going. That is, uh, should work pretty well, but let's see. It's not the camera, but it's it's my phone. <laughs> but I have this new uh, lamp going. I'm just there's a lot of light here, so I'm just turning it down a little bit. There you go. Maybe out there. I think that is good. Maybe I think I'm actually going to turn it that way, so you can kind of uh, grab your supplies and. Uh, for some reason I can't see the comments live here, so I'm just uh, kind of refreshing as I go. Perfect! Didi, you have your supplies ready. You're, Maria, you're from Arizona. And Gary, welcome. 
Oh, I love this. And South Carolina. Oh, I love it, love it, love it, love it. <laughs> okay. So, I have my paper first. And uh, the paper is uh, Canson uh, Heritage. It's cellulose paper, 300 grams. And um, it's cold press. So it's uh, nothing fancy. It's just a uh, nice uh, watercolor paper that works fine. And then I have my fine liners. And you can see I actually have three different brands here. Um, but that is totally fine because they are all water resistant. Um, and they are archival ink. So we are good to go with these three. And the sizes are a 005, a 02 and a 01. And I might not use all of them because I do have quite a big paper. So uh, I might mm, just stick with the 01 and 02. We'll see. Then I have two brushes and I chose them already just to have fewer supplies laying around. There's a number set, number nine here, and uh, a number four. I have a nice tip, both of them, and they are synthetic brushes. And then I have my paints. These are Daniel Smith paints that I use all the time, but you can definitely use something else. These are a little bit pricey, but definitely uh, go with something, whatever you have, and uh, that is perfectly fine. Then I have some water, of course, and ta-ta, my trusty, very painted cloth, <laughs> which I always use. And uh, kind of, I never clean this because I actually like how it looks. So that is just the way that is. And I actually thought we could uh, do some, some blue anemones today. So I... Um, I'm going to just give myself a little bit of a reference photo. I'm not sure if that works at all. Oh, I found out my computer can do cool, cool stuff. That is kind of cool. Um, so I'm going to start out with my zero one, one And we could, of course, do this either line first or wash first. And in this case, I'm going line first because... Um, if we are going wash first, then uh, there would have to be quite a lot of drying time. So I'm going to do line first. And I'm actually just going to start out with uh, sketching. And just to make sure you can see it a little bit better, I'll just angle it a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to start out with one that is kind of looking um, upwards. Not sure if that is good. You could definitely go with a a uh, pencil first. That would work. Um, have one up here. There's kind of a middle, the center here um, that we're going to sketch as well. Kind of a ball, and there's some stamens going out from that. We have a petal that is tucked in here. I kind of got the inspiration for the blue anemones um, the other day because I posted an anemone on oh, maybe YouTube or Instagram or somewhere and people were sharing all about these blue anemones they had in their gardens and stuff and that is really cool and I'm like I want that. So uh, now we are sketching blue anemones because that is really cool. Um, so here we have one first. And you can see I'm not being careful with any of the lines. They are what they are. And um, we can put in these uh, stamens as well. Seeds. So they are kind of actually a little bit in front here as well. Let me just see if I can get you a little bit closer. Yes. And we can actually, we can make these uh, lines 
I actually think I'm gonna go with the 005 there just to kind of attach the seeds to to the center here there you go and then while we are using this I can uh, ah, maybe I'll, I'll wait a little bit I'm just gonna add a few more flowers here um, when we are doing less is more that comes with goes for composition as well as uh, colors and layers and everything so really just think about how much you want to include uh, i'm covering this if you have a reference i'm kind of i'm covering that in um, in the beginner course but i want to say that you really want to consider um how much you need and very often we don't need much to create the the motif that we actually are looking for um see one going here so often we want to choose to take a little less um so this photo i have here my reference i can put it in um I wonder if I can put it in the comments actually so you can see it. Uh, what are we sketching? It's a blue um, blue uh, anemone. Oh, I can't put it here, but I'll put up the reference after the sketch so you can you can see it and the uh, sketch along. And I found this on on Unsplash, so if you want to go there you can you can find that too um so that was just one more so we want to make sure to include as little as possible but still have a harmonious composition and i always go for for three kind of uh, elements um or eight, sorry an uneven number of elements so here we have two and i really want a third to kind of make this look more harmonious um, or I would use five if it was a big bouquet or seven, of course, if it, uh, it was bigger again. So I'm adding one more. This could be a little bit more open so we can kind of see the whole um, middle there. And... can see how this one is foreshortened and you can just sketch a very uh, like a half half an oval <laughs> and uh, that will that will be good and Didi you are asking if I uh, prefer hot or cold press and I definitely prefer cold press and that is actually um, can be a little bit weird because when we are doing line and wash, often hot press can be a little bit more smooth and uh, softer on the fine liners. But I really just enjoy the watercolor texture and just working with, with that as an element as well. So that is why I really prefer the, the hot press to, uh, or the cold press um, to the hot press. So now we have three anemones, and of course this one needs some seeds as well. So just going around here. And attaching them. And now we have quite a big chunk here in the middle. I'm going to give that a little bit of texture just by doing a few scribbles, especially at the bottom. Uh, and then at the top, you can do some dots or something like that. But then you kind of keep that highlight um, free, so you're not kind of scribbling all over the place. So there we have that. And I'm just going to scroll. 
And where will the replay be, Cindy? It will be here in the Facebook group. So uh, if you just wait for it, this to end, then it will be available there. And uh, I'll just put a link for it at the top so you can see it. I just grabbed my 005 and um, just doing the some lines here to shape the petals starting at this the outer edge and on the other outer edge and then make sure to to kind of turn um, so these will go this way and these go that way because the the petal is curving like that and um, it's always a good idea to keep an eye on the reference which is also why I should have given you a reference but I hope you can uh, wait a little longer for that and just see where uh, what direction I am uh, sketching in and this petal actually has a little bit of a bend so that is cool just adding that in And I'm so glad to see so many of you. I think there's there's 28 at the moment um, here in the group. I think that is incredible. I love to do these, and especially if there's when there's a lot of us sketching together, it's so much fun. And I actually um, included a few or oh, four live uh, sketch alongs in in the beginner course because this is a great way to to learn in the, in my opinion to, to to kind of sketch along and be able to ask questions and stuff like that in um in real time so all the the tutorials that are in the course will be live as well so uh they can be sketched together with the teacher and all the other students. That is really cool. And uh, I'm just going to add a few lines here. And you don't have to add um, lines to everything if, um, if that does not make sense. Again, less is more. So I'm just going to leave those two uh, here behind. And um, just add a bit of texture to this one. And uh, we are good with, with the texture or the direction part here. The fine liners are fantastic for creating this shape. And of course, when we are working with the uh, watercolor you can create shape as well but often when you shape with watercolors it uh, does require quite a lot of layering because we need to layer in um, in the darks uh, a little bit later but here we can do it in one go with the fine liners and i'm not saying you don't you can't layer um but if we are working with the less is more philosophy just putting in a few stems here and adding some some uh, scribbly foliage here this is very much just scribbles um, anemones are like that and these lines are just flowy long and um, a little bit of foliage as well. There you go. And this one. And when we have more flowers like this, you it's a good idea to have, the, have them kind of overlapping like this. And it really ties to the compos composition together. So if they were just kind of going down, not touching each other they would look very separate but by having them crisscross a little bit it now looks like a uh, 
a much more harmonious composition. So I hope that that makes sense. And look how they are dancing. That is really cool. Now I want to go in just a little bit with my zero two. And um, I'm always using this to add just a little bit of darkness to um, a few areas. So just going in and adding a bit of darker tones to some of the areas here where there might be shadow. And I always go for the areas that are have overlapping petals. So like here, for example, they're overlapping. Or in here where we have kind of something that is tucked in between um, some something else, which is a, a petal again, <laughs> which of very often there's petals. Um, over here, I'm going to add a bit of dark areas. And don't be scared of adding uh, darkness. Sometimes we can be a little bit scared of it. And that is completely fine. But remember, it's, it is just paper and we can just redo it if it is. Uh, we only sketch for 20 minutes or so. So this is not something that takes a long time when we start to, to practice it a little bit. And that's also why I really, really, really like this style because especially with little kids, I am... I don't have much time and I know we are all super busy with a lot of stuff. Um, so doing something that does not take up our entire life, um, which painting can do at some points, that is uh, really, really fantastic. I especially love that I can just sit down when they are playing or and I just have those 20 minutes and uh, it's peace and quiet and it's absolutely incredible. And it just recharges everything. So here you can see the anemones. And uh, I'm just going to ask you guys if you are. Are you with me? And uh, does it make sense? And then I can just put it on the lid while you guys are sketching. I know you are sketching along so of course that is totally fine if you can't uh, grab your or just write right now but i just want to make sure you are with me so i am not going too fast or leaving something out just going to see you are sketching along daddy fantastic fantastic that's that's a danish word uh, that is fantastic in English, and uh, you knew that already, of course, but I don't know, my, uh, yeah, never mind. We are going to add some color to this. Oh, Melanie, you're sketching with me. Fantastic. Love it. I can't wait to see your sketches. I'm already super excited. And I'm just, yes. I think I'm caught up. Fantastic, Carissa. Sketching along also. I, I love that you're sketching along. So many of you. That is fantastic. I have to do these all more often. It's like a party, sketching party. And you, Olia. Great. So now, now I feel confident to go uh, a little bit further. We do have blue anemones. And they are blue. But they also have a kind of a hidden tone. Uh, which is a uh, violet. So I'm just going to do a quick color swatch up here so you can see the blues. I think I'm gonna use a see a French ultramarine. So that is here. And a violet. 
This is a dioxine violet. Oh, that looks pretty. That was not meant to do that, but it is really pretty. Look how that looks here. And I could just explain a little bit about this because there's actually um, a really cool thing about the French ultramarine. This is a little bit nerdy, but you can see how there's a few grains in here. It almost looked like it's uh, broken. And uh, I hear a lot of people being really annoyed about this. And that's just because they're granulating. So if you haven't experienced granulating colors before, this is a, that is a thing and I absolutely love it and also encourage it. But it can be a little bit disturbing if you are just starting out. Okay, so these are the two colors I'm gonna use and maybe a green, I think I'm gonna use a sap green as well. So we have that here. So those three colors. And um, when we are talking less is more with colors, I could go with a lot more colors, but I really choose to go with few because that is giving us a much more harmonious look. And also I want to try to do this in just one layer. Uh, again, less is more comes with comes to layers as well. It's not like you can do layers. Um, and sometimes we really need to because the watercolor does dry out quite light, but I try to keep my layers to a minimum. And um, the way I achieve my um, my deeper colors, because I do have quite a lot of color variation, and I'm going to show that to you in a second. Now I'm just wetting my bro my petal here and adding some paint, letting it flow very nicely in to the water and while that dries we can just work our way around here we can do one that is just wet on dry to give us a bit of variation And we have to do this uh, a little bit quickly because we are going to add violet as well. And try to see if you can avoid doing too much. Now I'm just going to drip in a little bit of the violet here and there. And see if I can get it to flow into the water. And if it's not flowing, then I'm just adding more water, just dripping in clean water to let it mix. I'm not going to mix it on the paper or uh, mix it on a palette. Just mixing it or just letting it the, the water kind of do the mixing. Oh, Deb, you can always watch the replay, so no worries. No worries, and it'll be up here on the Facebook group, so don't worry about that. We are just sketching uh, blue anemones, and we are at the watercolor part here. And then, I, I don't know if you heard that, but that was a very loud sound that actually sounded like one of my kids fell out of the red. So hopefully that is not true. And that one needs a little bit of violet too, I think. There we go. And this one over here as well, just the same procedure. And that is actually really cool. Look how it's only colored the right half of the pe uh, petal here. I think I'm just going to leave that, see if I can kind of leave it alone because that looks really cool. 
and it's a nice uh, highlight. So just kind of painting around here. And the way I am uh, getting my colors to become very vibrant, uh, as I said before, I'm not layering, but I am charging. And charging is such a cool thing because when it's still wet, you can still work with it. So this one, for example, is really wet and look, pretty things are happening. But as long as it's wet, you can add more paint. That's called charging. And I'm going to add um, a bit of blue that is not very wet. Just see if I can get this. You can see how that toned very dark. There's still quite a lot of water here and that will dilute it, of course. But you can charge it. It's like a supercharger. I think my, my baby boy would say that because he's a superhero type of guy. Just adding a bit more here. And there. And I think I might add a little bit. Of, I'm just going to let it dry for a little bit. But I actually think I'm going to add a tiny bit of paint gray in the center. Um, so I'm just going to add that up here because uh, the sensors are very dark. So maybe just a little bit of that would be very nice. And while that dries, I can add in the greens. Holding my handle very high and uh, trying to just give these a little bit of color. There you go. And while it's still wet, you can add a bit of the blue or the violet if you uh, feel like doing that. But just to give it that color variation. And over here, this one. And then this one. And I think I might just add a little bit of blue here as well. And it just really ties the composition together that you can see the blues are mixing with the greens. I love that. And I think this might just be... Um, that's blue I have on my... Yes. I actually want to add just a tiny bit of green to maybe just a little bit of the middle here. Just to kind of tie it together. Maybe uh, there. That's kind of cool. Uh, what size brush are you using? Diane, I am using a 9. And this one has no brush number, but it's a 4. As far as I remember. But I used it so much. I love this. Um, that I kind of torn, uh, wore it down. So I think while this is drying completely, I'm just going to add that. No, no, no. I'm going to do some splatters because that is very fun. And I might just lift up the camera a little bit and do just load my brush with the blue. Tap it. And maybe just a little bit more dense color here. And a little bit of violet. This is looking really cool. I'm just going to use a little bit of clean water as well to kind of. I'm trying to hit some of these splatters so the water will kind of. Spread a little bit, or the, the paint will spread a little bit, and making the splatters look a little bit, bit more um, diverse. I also teach that in the beginner course, uh, all everything will be taught there. 
Um, and uh, this is just the beginning, there's so much. But I think we are ready to do the... I loaded a little bit, a very little bit of paint gray here. And I'm just going to add that here. Sorry. Let's see if I can get it to focus. So you can see I'm just adding a little bit. And I really don't want it to cover everything up. That would kind of ruin the highlight. So just a little bit to get it a little darker. And then where it's still wet, I can add a tiny bit of paint gray as well. So it's not the only place I have it. Over here, there's uh, a center as well. I'm not sure if, how much this does for the sketch, but I could maybe have done it in a blue or something, but I think it works pretty well. Let's see. So there's still some some uh, areas here that are running, but that is okay, I think. And uh, I love how the greens are kind of highlighting and catching the spirit of these um, anemones. So I. Uh, I think this is actually it. This is our sketch. I'm just going to um, to switch the camera now and uh, let me know in the in the comments how you're doing. See if I can. Oh, you are looking up my nose. Fantastic. <laughs> just take, putting this uh, a little bit further away. I have a feeling this is going to. Um, dry up really pretty because we have these um, pools of water that are just creating the beautiful drying lines and um, that is absolutely incredible and you can definitely go in with watercolor first and just let it dry and see what will the lines uh, be like and I'm just going to check the comments here now oh <laughs> Jessica I think I did more than less <laughs> it is it takes practice um, and definitely, especially when we are dripping in, the paint can be, uh, it can uh, kind of take over. But uh, practice, 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 it always helps. So much fun, Didi. I'm so glad to hear it. Oh, Deb, not too bad for the first time. Still working on the splatters. Yes, they do too, take practice as well. And you are welcome, Jessica. I am so glad you joined. And this has been so much fun. I'm really looking forward to doing more of these lives. And uh, next time we'll probably, maybe, maybe before, but uh, probably be in the, in the beginner course as well. Um, because my bonus, one of my bonuses on that course is a, a two week sketch along uh, event. And that's going to be so much fun. It's in April and it's going to be incredible. And uh, I promised there was a bonus for you because if you sign up for the beginner course that I've been talking a little bit about here today, and you might have seen on Facebook and Instagram and email and wherever, then um, today and the next 24 hours, you will, uh, as a bonus, get my uh, course on how to keep your colors vibrant because Especially when we are mixing like this on the paper and uh, not using a palette and everything, it's, it can be a little bit hard to keep your colors not muddy. And you know what you, you know what I mean, because we uh, tend to get a little bit muddy colors, especially if we are messing around a little bit too much and tr having a little bit of hard time uh, carrying around that less is more style so that is a bonus for you if you join uh, the course in the next 24 hours and i'm going to put a link for the course so you can uh, check it out of course and um mm, 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 mm. you can see i'm focused when i have my tongue out my mouth let's see we are getting it here and uh, i'm just scrolling down so i can keep seeing your comments 
and Dodi, Dodi or Dodi, Dodi, you are welcome. And I am so, so happy that uh, you guys have been here. I hope you will check out the beginner course if you are a beginner or if you just really like this style and have someone else you want to share it with. Because this is, you, you can <laughs> just look at me, I absolutely love this style because you can do it in so little time. So if you have friends who not really feel like they can do have time for watercolors, then this is a great entrance and uh, you can get your friends to paint with you at some point if you like. Uh, or if you're a beginner and uh, you might just have uh, purchased my book or something like that and uh, you kind of just dipped your toes, then this is a great way to see all the techniques in action and uh, learn how to read references and figure out what colors to use from a reference and uh, the perfect supplies, how to make a habit of yourself and all the techniques. Of course, there's uh, real-time tutorials as well. Uh, and Angela, what if you already joined the course? And I'm so glad you already joined. You will, of course, also get this bonus course. Mm, of course, I am sending out the courses or enrolling you in the courses in um, uh, when there's 20 minutes, so maybe around Saturday morning or something like that. Um, as soon as I have the time for it. And uh, just... Thank you so much for doing this. I was. I love the draw along live. Oh, just in time for my baby's nap time. I know, Melanie, you have some cute babies to uh, to take care of, and you are really a nap time painter. And I've been that too. For I have two kids, and they kind of just came right after each other, so I have had a lot of nap time sketching. Um, and I think that that's really what kept me going. So just uh, keep up the, the good work. And I know you do. I've seen your sketches so many times. Uh, Olia, you are writing. Thank you so much. I always am preparing to paint for so long. And this is just so great and quick. Exactly. We don't need to spend hours and hours to sketch and paint, especially paint. Um, I I felt almost like this was cheating in the beginning because it was so quick um, but it really isn't there's no cheating in art and this is this is maybe this is one of the most important things I'm going to say today there's no cheating in art it's not cheating to uh, sketch with a pencil or use black watercolor or white or um, do line and wash this is so much fun and it's an art style in itself and it makes room for everybody to join which is incredible Incredible. Everybody can create art, uh, even if we don't have a lot of time. So that is absolutely incredible. Uh, <laughs> and Deb, I love your comments. Uh, so much to learn and splatters all over the place. Exactly. And that's actually why I'm sitting here, and not in my uh, uh, in in the next room, because that's where my husband is with his computer and that has splatters everywhere and I was kind of he, he kind of removed me let's say that very nicely so <clears throat> yeah exactly I he is he's the cutest guy <laughs> he was like what are you doing is that blue on my screen where there's no blue never mind uh, I'm just babbling uh, I want to say thank you so much. If you have any questions, just uh, send them along. And uh, if you want to join the course, there's an early bird prize right now that goes up on Monday. So it, the early bird prize ends on Sunday, April 2nd. And uh, right now and for the next 24 hours, there's this uh, extra bonus of this uh, fantastic uh, color vibrancy chorus. So uh, check out the, the beginner course. I'm going to put a link in uh, the Facebook group as well. So you can check that out. And I will see you around. And make sure to post your sketches. I can't wait to see them. Have a wonderful evening or day or getting back to work. And I will see you around.